Hi there, Skitty Vinstani, CEO of OneWire. Welcome to Open Door. Today we're going to go interview George Bell, who is the CEO of JumpTap, a company being acquired by Millennial Media. He's an amazing entrepreneur, he's an amazing CEO. He actually ran Excite. Uh, and you promise, um, he was a freelance writer prior to that. He's had an amazing career. Let's go see what he's up to. I'm here today with my very good friend, George Bell, who is the CEO of JumpTap. And George, you've run a number of other companies, very impressive companies. Can't thank you enough for having me over today. Really appreciate it. Um, before we talk about what you're up to today and with your company, because you guys are going through a, a sale and or merger, would love to learn a little bit more about your upbringing and where you grew up. I um, came from a long line of lawyers and bankers and um, public servants. And I had presumed I would end up in that uh, path myself. I actually have wondered a lot why I took a different path. I have an older sister who, in many ways, um, by going into investment banking herself, became the firstborn son and fulfilled, I think, my father's ambitions that one of us would follow in his footsteps. Um, he was CEO of Jenny Montgomery Scott and uh, back in the Drexel and Drexel Burnham days was a New York guy and so forth. Um, so in, in many ways, I think the, the burden of being the firstborn fell on my sister, despite the fact she was female, and it allowed me to actually be more liberal about what I might pursue. And I fell in love with actually writing and journalism and so forth. And there had never been such a creature in our family. And I spent the first 10 years out of Harvard um, producing and writing documentaries all over the world about vanishing species of animals and vanishing tribes and doing adventure documentaries. And I was on the road probably seven, eight months a year. I would spend 150 nights a year in a tent. Okay. Um, and so that was something I loved to do. I wasn't much of a partner to anybody in life because I was out of the country so often, and this is, of course, pre-internet, pre-cell phone. Okay. These are the telex days. Uh, so you weren't very reliable, nor was I very much in touch with people. And when I needed to settle down a little later, I didn't realize it at the time, but the hurry-up offense of the documentary business, which was pitching a network for, in those days, a half a million dollar budget to make an hour-long show, and then assembling a crew of people going to a third world country hiring porters, making bribes, getting the meals together, outfitting the crews, um, and then actually legislating to spend $50,000 a day for 10 days shooting. Mm -hmm. But in the face of a monsoon or an animal you can't find or a tribe that didn't show up, you know, it was very great training for entrepreneurship because it's like pitching an idea and then circumstances change. Right. And you have to adjust on the fly. And I couldn't call back to New York in those days and say, what would you like me to do now? It's rained for two weeks straight. Um, and so not thinking of it that way until later in life, I recognized it was a hugely important training ground for me as an entrepreneur to be sitting there with a limited amount of time, a limited amount of cash, having pitched an idea, and then recognizing the idea either vanished or changed before your eyes. Yeah, I bet you, you must have also had some amazing experiences. Did you ever have any you know, near-death experiences? Um, some, some. We lost a uh, porter in an avalanche on the uh, Nepal side of Mount Everest. Um, and the avalanche passed probably 100, maybe 200 yards away from me. Uh, I'll never forget that one. And um, we had a uh, confrontation with a, a large brown bear in a field in uh, Siberia. Um, and we got ourselves lost in the middle of the Central African Republic, uh, thinking we were keeping pace with a tribe of semi-nomadic pygmies, those sorts of things. Uh, we had an accident with a shark off of Western Australia. It's interesting. Um, I started all this in my early 20s, and by the time I got to the end of it in my early 30s, I started going on every trip thinking about what could go wrong. And in my early 20s, it never occurred to me. I thought everything was going to go right, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. So, okay, so you were a journalist, uh, had an awesome experience, uh, and then you decided, okay, now i got to get into the corporate world. What was your next move? I didn't know because I had really had this odd 10 years. I, I really, I loved what I did, um, but I literally got onto a plane and went to a very far away place in a pair of shorts and hiking shoes. And now all of a sudden I got married and um, my wife said to me, you know, you need to figure out something else to do. And so I, I tried to think about how to leverage journalism and documentary writing into something that was more stable and was more of a stay at home job. And I was called by Headhunter to apply for the job to be the editor in chief of Field and Stream magazine. Right. And I thought I had no business to be an editor of a magazine, I'd written quite a lot about the outdoors, but I'd never run a magazine. And I went to the interview anyway. And 
I hit it off with a guy who was the CEO at Times Mirror Magazines at that time. And it was uh, probably early 90s. And I, I said, look, I don't think I'm really appropriate for this, but I do need a job. And I, I was all these magazines on their wall that they own from golf to outdoor life to field and stream and skiing and snowboarding and so forth. And I said, what are you doing with all these titles to take them into multimedia? Like in those days, instructional video cassettes or um, cable shows. And he said, nothing. And I said, well, why could I, could I come and like, write you a business plan about what you might do to take the value of these brands and cross over into television and, and video cassette. Right. And he said, that'd be great. And he said, what do you need? I said, well, I've never been to business school, so I need to figure out what a business plan is, and I need somebody to help me with that, and so forth, right? So um, like a lot of things in life, the guy gave me a break. Right. And that was the transition I made from running around the world in shorts and hiking shoes to being on Park Avenue at Times Mirror. Right. And I spent five years there. and. Um, he was the greatest mentor to me, this guy, Francis Pandolfi, because without him, I mean, he took a gamble, you know, and that's, you have to have a little bit of that luck in life. And um, I got bumped up through the ranks and I ultimately suggested to the corporation that we start our own cable channel, which we started, which was the Outdoor Life Channel, which yeah. ultimately became the Versus Network, now NBC Sports Network. And then we were the co-founders of the Golf Channel with um, Arnold Palmer and Joe Gibbs down in West Palm because we owned Golf Magazine and we had cable assets as well. So I had the experience of starting two cable channels from the editorial value of our magazines um, during that five-year period, which was amazing you know, and, 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 and very lucky. And then I went to Silicon Valley. Okay, well, how did that happen? Because it was interesting. I just remember you saying, you know, I'm going to go start, uh, go work for a startup called Excite. I got, again, it wasn't, wasn't me who thought of it. Um, after five years at Times Mirror, I got a call from Ramsey Byrne in those days, the old headhunting firm that... Sure. Um, did a lot of Silicon Valley searches, and they said that uh, Kleiner Perkins had funded a small uh, search company in Silicon Valley of 10 people, and they needed to go get a CEO as a condition of their next round of financing. And to tell you how little I knew about the startup world at the time, I thought Kleiner Perkins was a law firm. Um, I went out to the job interview because I was interested in it, and I remember wearing a suit and being interviewed by guys at the time who were 24 years old in basketball shorts and sneakers and writing code. And um, I met with the Kleiner Perkins guys at the time and so forth. And there was something about the corporate world of Times Mirror having started these channels that I recognized, which was I was never gonna be given equity. I never owned any real stock in Times Mirror of significance that would change my life. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really going to be given the freedom to run the business within a large corporation the way I might. And I started to see that the way you did that was in the world of startups. And although the risks were quite greater, the rewards could be too. Mm -hmm. And ultimately they offered me the job. And I remember going back to Long Island to my wife at the time saying, you're gonna think I'm crazy because I was doing you know, quite well in my first corporate job, but I think we should move the whole family to, to Palo Alto, pick up roots and um, take a flyer on this 10 person company. And I mean, I lived in a world where it was a car and a country club and bonuses and those sorts of things were starting to come my way. Right. And um, I always thought about it. I, it was written about at the time that I was taking an un a sort of silly risk, you know. In those days, um, I didn't have an email account. None of us knew where these things were going to go. And I remember thinking that if it was all a wash and I failed at it, or the company failed, going back to the east and back in traditional media would seem like a reasonably simple thing to do because I would actually be more valuable having struck out for new media and had a wipeout. But at least I tried it, you know. And so I had the feeling that I had actually would probably add to my career value by at least trying this, right? And I went out in late 1995, so the timing was just dead perfect. And we grew Excite from um, 10, 15 people at the time. And within 90 days of being there, we were taking the company public because we had turned down a $70 million uh, stock offer from Microsoft from Bill Gates and, and uh, Steve Ballmer, and off we went. And I was taking a company public as an English major from Harvard with no graduate school training and no technology background. Um, and leading a roadshow, and by my side, we had no CFO at the time, by my side was the 25-year-old co-founder of Excite, Joe Krause, and that was the roadshow. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, how did you, I mean, obviously you built an amazing company, um, and we were joking around before about the fact that, you know, in terms of motivating people, you said, Skid, I used to have tennis balls in my, in my boardroom, I used to chuck at them, you know, to keep, make sure everybody was staying away. How did you keep everybody excited, juiced, um, and, and motivated? 
uh, initially in the worst way possible, meaning people got hooked on the stock price. Mm -hmm. And I think at the time, maybe we made five or 600 millionaires. Um, so it's very easy when you have a young culture and all of a sudden people have paid off all their student loans and have Lamborghinis for people to remain excited about their job. I say it's the wrong way to motivate people because the stock ultimately goes down too. Um, and you're left, you know, sort of addicted to the wrong kind of drug. And so I think in some ways it took me a while to figure that out and that the fundamental excitement about the company really ought to be around uh, what we do to open up opportunities for customers, for advertisers, you know, for people who are using our search engine at the time and so forth. And while, while that took a while, I ran Excite for about four years or so, three or four years, before we in turn were bought by At Home. And then we created Excite At Home um, as a merged company. So um, we went through a lot of ups and downs. We probably bought 35 or 40 companies. Uh, we would buy one or two per quarter over that sort of four year period, something like that. And um, we did a lot of things wrong, but we, we, it's probably still the most exciting four years I spent as an entrepreneur.